Good morning, wherever you are in the world. As I always say, it's Graham Moore, and I'm really pleased to be with you with my two very good colleagues, Phoebe Francis and Mohammed Shukri. Good morning, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good morning, and um, hi, Phoebe. Hi, Graham. Phoebe, good morning, oh, Graham and Mohammed. Nice to be here. Good to be here, and we are feeling less stressed than a lot of people, I think. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> stress is the word that's so often talked about in the workplace, isn't it? Oh my gosh, the stress, mm. the pressure, and oh, I've got so many things on, and I need to do this, and I'm. So the topic today, gentlemen, is how do leaders live a stress-free life? Well, I guess the first part we should say is, well, who says they do? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So, Mohammed, what are you? Th what are your comments on this? Yeah, because um, I've often seen leaders taking responsibilities, and the word responsibility alone brings a lot of stress. And the reason is that they have targets, they have deadlines, they have uh, operations to run, and also people to lead, and that to them brings stress. What if things go wrong? And uh, they expect things to go, uh, you know, in line with the uh, out, uh, with the uh, you know desired outcomes, mm. and they don't always. No, no, no why? So there is a stress, and yeah, yeah, totally agree with you. Yeah. So Phoebe, is there a stress that, that leaders or managers have? Which which do you think? Yeah, my thought process comes like this. You know, when our values or individual values get uh, disrespected or violated, there is a chance where uh, a level of stress start emerging. Yeah. And quite often, one aspect which leaders can do is check check on the assumptions. What are, what are we trying uh, and thinking rather than exploring that with the people? And that actually helps uh, if there is any stress to be out, because yeah. if we if we keep things within us, it start to impact our body. We have oh, yeah. that visceral reaction, oh, and, yeah. and and it 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 uh, people start to uh, come out openly with their thoughts, and that is where stress gets challenging. Sure. Look, let's just deal with this. There is good stress and there's bad stress, right? Yes, there is good stress. Uh, so we're not condemning all of it. Uh, but I want people at all levels uh, to, as far as possible, live a stress-free life because of the downside of stress. When we are stressed, we're not thinking as clearly. We are not thinking calmly. We are Our mind and thought processes are impacted on this thing called stress. And as Phoebe has said, yeah, it affects the body. Stress will kill you in simple terms uh, if you go down that track. Now, I years ago, I used to do a lot of work with pilots, Airline pilots, those sorts of pilots. And I used to say, I never want the pilot to say he's stressed when he's bringing the aircraft into land. It was the two most difficult parts of the flight, uh, takeoff and landing. Apart from that, it's all straight and level. But, <laughs> but I, I don't want him to be stressed. I'm perfectly okay when he's feeling pressure. Okay. But stress, things can kind of go, mm -mm, because he's not thinking as clearly. So I am going to come back to my original statement about how do leaders live a stress-free life and therefore get better results if you're living and they're happier. So how can leaders do that? Mohammed? Yeah, I, I, maybe I will bring a small uh, story which I remember now, my line manager in one of my workplace. You know, whenever we have challenging circumstances, uh, we, we always have a discussion. And uh, this is the question which uh, he asks us. What, 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 what is your idea, Phoebe? Can, can you tell me how can we uh, avoid this stressful situation or how can we overcome this challenging? And he comes and says, whatever your idea is there, we are here to support you. And that actually helps to come out with innovative ideas. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That. We're here to support you. And there's one other correlation or relationship to that is that 
wasn't quite expressed that way, but it's implicit. We are here to listen to you. And we, when people know that their leader listens, that very part of the relationship of listening improves the relationship so much. Yeah, so we're here to support you. You're going to feel a lot better. But he was he feeling any stress, do you think, as a leader? Was he feeling any stress? Your man, Bibi? Yeah. Would he feel... I think uh, he, he, he is improving and he's showing that Phoebe, we trust you. Yeah, but, but and was, he, he, was he feeling any stress when he says this to you? Uh, no, he's he's open and he's discussing and he's uh, encouraging us. What what can we do differently? Yeah, yeah. Avoid that. And that makes... Uh, I haven't seen a stress in his face. <laughs> so therefore... By what he was, he was, what he was doing was to empower you, and he has a relationship. So that's one of the yep. things that leaders can do to avoid stress. Oh, leave us, lead a stress-free life, Muhammad. Uh, well, I am reminded now. Uh, since we are talking about airplanes, I was on a trip on Al Arabiya um, Airlines. Okay, we were heading to Sharjah, Sharjah, and. Uh, um, the airplane had to land in Ras Al Khaimah instead of Sharjah because of some fueling defection. And I was really panicking. And the pilot was talking to us from his cockpit and he was really transparent with us. Our stress level went down, but then beautiful things also happened. We landed, we couldn't leave the, the airplane. They started uh, doing things outside the rule, like they gave us, you know, um, they give us some juices, which you have to buy on that airplane. They give it for free. And then they said, you want to take a selfie with the uh, captain? Let's do that. And suddenly there was fun. And I'm saying, how do these employees, including the uh, crew and the captain, do this without calling the headquarters and asking for an exemption? They were fully empowered and all the stress went down. So uh, to, to me, what comes to me, Tom Peters, what he said, he said, uh, take care of people and people will take care of business. Absolutely. You are not taking your eyes off business, but the people will take care of the business for you. The only uh, request, the only condition is you take care of them. Yeah. So who takes care of them? Which function is it? It is a leader function to take yeah, care of, isn't exactly. it? Right. That's that's what leaders do. Well, we still might say managers do, do that, but that's a leader behavior, right? Absolutely. And when the manager does that, it gets to what we talked about last week, which is the leader manager. I, I want managers to be leading stress-free lives. And in order to do that, it's getting to what we're now talking about, which is behaviors of leaders. And what Phoebe mm. said about what his manager did in saying, what, what problems yeah. do you have? We can help you. And what you talked about with the staff of the airline for being empowered, rather than using the word which I so much push back on in the customer service situation, such as you were in with the airline, the word policy, right? And and using the word policy when it comes to customers is like the red rag to the bull in many cases, and that gets that because that's getting away from the personal relationship. So if a manager says to the, to a staff member, I can't do this or you can't do that because it is company policy, what does that do to the relationship? What does that do to stress yeah, right. levels? I mean, I mean, uh, Graham, in that day, I, what I saw was all leadership, but not that things were not managed. They were managed yeah. smoothly because of leadership. You know, yeah. as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I keep saying leadership is not hard. Oh, boy. And the results that we get are fantastic. And the leader go home, goes home at the end of the day not feeling stressed and, you know, not having to deal with emotionally as, as he's an emotionally intelligent person, um, unlike a manager who may not be able to handle his emotions. And when he goes home, what does he do? When he walks past the bathroom and sees the towels dropped on the floor, he yells at the children. Whose fault is it? Yeah. The children know it's because of something that's happened, because of the stress that this manager is dealing with and he hasn't been able to manage his emotions. 
But also, in the moment that the situation occurred, he is not leading. So let's drill this down a little bit further and see what are the sorts of things that you think leaders should do. Give me some more examples of what leaders should do, will do, so that they are not stressed. And who else is not stressed? The people they're leading. Yeah, one thing which comes to my mind is, you know, in organizations quite often uh, that appreciation part is missing. And it can be saying simply, thank you. And, uh, you, you know, that is where the encouraging the heart comes in. And how can we do that? It, it is not costly. Saying thank you often makes Absolutely. the workplace a beautiful space of less stress. Yeah. So it's just deal with this a little bit further. If, if someone has had a challenge in getting something done, let's just say one of the staff members has a challenge in meeting the deadline, in whatever it was doing, in, in making it work within budget. And he's had a little bit of focus, I'm not saying stress, but focus on achieving that. And the manager, or in this case, leader manager, when the result is it has been achieved, then says, wow, that was fantastic. That was a lot of effort on your part, and you did a great job. And one of the consequences of that initial behaviour is that when that person is in a similar situation in the future, they're going to know that the manager is going to be giving them the recognition for what they've done rather than saying, well, you should have finished five days sooner. <laughs> <laughs> so what else, Muhammad? I, I think uh, the flow is beautiful with what you said, guys. Uh, I always believe that what comes after the behavior will be more influencing that one than what comes before. We can always remind people, you know, uh, give them reminders, do this, cues, don't forget to do this. But when they do the behavior that is desired, we fail to reinforce it. We fail to acknowledge it. And as Phoebe said, we fail to appreciate and thank it. All right. Jack Welch said, you don't get the behavior that you want. You get the behavior that you reward. So uh, if we as leaders, uh, the moment we see any tiny speck of uh, compliance or good performance, we should immediately uh, thank it, reinforce it, acknowledge it, and then we will see it will grow and expand and it will run itself. That is yeah. leadership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I also say this, that uh, what you, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit of what Jack Welsh has said, but it's what you do as a leader that brings out the best in the people you're leading. It's what you do, or the worst. It's what you do that brings that, that relieves the stress in the organisation. It's what you do as a leader that has everybody feeling that they want to be achieving great things with you. And in that journey, is anybody going to feel stress? I certainly don't think so. Pressure. I'm okay with pressure. Never a problem. So, what other elements of the leadership challenge? Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty what other elements of the five practices do you think exactly may have specific relevance in letting go or reducing or not even having stress exactly so um i i just i just wanted to ask you now uh, i once asked you uh, what how does leadership challenge reduce stress because i had a specific assignment or about stress and leadership. And you answered me in a very uh, smooth, quick, uh, walking through the five practices. Since we are in the Leadership Challenge Middle East and time is running out, Phoebe and I want you, Graham, please, to walk us again through the five practices and how do they re relieve stress? Well, <laughs> thank you, Mohammed. You guys could do this well, I'm sure. So let's take the first of the five practices, model the way. What is one of the fundamental outcomes out of Model the Way? It's about the relationship. It's about the credibility that the leader has. And when the leader who does what he says he will do every time, when he lives his values, what does this do to trust? It builds trust. Yeah. It builds credibility. Credibility builds trust. And when you've got trust with the, your leader, you're going to want to do the best you can do, right? 
So that is going to reduce stress because in this situation, if that person or people that you that the leader is responsible for knows that leader how they'll react and that they'll react positively, they're going to want to get great results because they understand what that leader is like. The next one, of course, inspire a shared vision. Inspire a shared vision. This is because the leader is talking about where we are going, We're talking about the future, talking about the exciting things that are going to happen and having people look and know that they are part of the future. They are part of his vision. Well, I'm going, we're going with him. We're on the same journey. We're climbing the same mountain together. And in climbing the same mountain, we're communicating, we're talking, we've got a relationship, we're going to achieve the result. Where's the stress? Whereas alternatively, the, the, I don't know where we're going. I've had situations where I've even had middle-level managers say, I don't know where we're going. What do you mean yeah. you don't know where you're going? <laughs> well, I go and talk to the manager, CEO or the managing director. Okay, good idea. You know, <laughs> because I don't know where we're going. And the next one, of course, is challenge the process. Number yeah. three, challenge the process. How do you think that could ease stress? Well, there's a couple of there's a number of ways. One is that people in your team, the people you're leading, know that if they make a mistake, that's a learning. They know that they don't and shouldn't cover that mistake up. Oh, I made a mistake. I'm not going. I'm, so that because that has stress, I'll cover that up. I won't tell anybody about it. And if I get caught, I'm in trouble. That's stress. But we admit mistakes. We talk about it. We learn from the mistakes. Challenge the process also says, what's a new and better and more important way to do this? Exactly. Yeah. I want you to come up with a better way of doing this, the leader says. And the leader will often have someone at a more junior or less in, in, less significant area in the, in the hierarchy yeah. of his team who comes up with a, an amazing idea. Wow, I didn't think of that. Wow, great idea. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's explore that. Whereas if the leader, sorry, sorry, if the manager says, I'm the only one who can come up with any new ideas, mm. look mm. at all the stress. But the leader is open to new ideas. Tell me, talk to me, show me. Let's do it. Let's find a way. There's always a way. And the next one, enable others to act. So what is he doing? In simple terms, empowering. I'm saying to you, Muhammad, you can do this. So is the leader then, is an example, is the leader going to be going home and saying, what have I done? I've just said to that person he can do it. I know he can't. I know he hasn't. What's that doing? He's got stress. But the point about this, as we know from the research, is that when I give someone a task that is challenging for them, 95%, sorry, 96, I nearly got it wrong, 96% of people say they perform at their best. When they're challenged, they will want to find ways to do a great result, deliver a great result. Fantastic. Am I going to have stress? No, not at all. Because they'll tell me along the way how, they, how they're going. We'll talk about it. And the fifth, which we've talked about, encourage the heart. People know that they are being valued. People know that they are appreciated. And the simple word of thank you, English, shukran, Arabic, Merci, French. I don't know terribly many more, but that simple word, however it's expressed, touches the heart. It's not just saying, oh, good job. It's about assure, assuring people that when they do the good job, you're going to recognise that. And all of these together have people saying internally, I love working here. I want to get the yeah. best results. And as a leader, if I've got people who love working in that environment, if they have embraced, if I've embraced and I'm living the five practices, I'm not going to have stress. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy what That's I'm doing. True. I'm going to have a great relationship with the people. We're all going to celebrate the great results. So yeah. how does that sound? Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. The five Thank leadership you. practices. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not hard. I keep saying it's not hard. But sometimes, often, there is a resistance to some of these practices. And I know that everybody where there is less stress of that negative side of stress is going to get much better results. The leader is going to get much better results. He's going to go home safely in the evening knowing what a great job the team did today. 
and safely knowing that we're going to achieve the objectives this week, this month, this year. And, and it's, if we do, then that's, everybody's going to celebrate. If we don't, it's not because everybody hasn't been doing their best. And that's the bet. That's yeah. what we can ask for. All right. Beautiful. Comments Beautiful. about I the think the bottom, the bottom message here for everyone who's hearing us is that don't uh, be stressed because you are a leader. In fact, you yeah. should be less stressed because uh, you're leading people. Uh, so the leadership is not the reason. It's actually the relief of the stress, especially if you go through the five practices that Graham has explained just now. What a great point. And it reminds me of what we talked about last time, was the, which was the leader-manager. You know, are you a leader? Are you a manager? Whatever. So when someone becomes a manager, they can become often overwhelmed by what they believe mm. they need to achieve in terms of the um, uh, their job outline, in terms of the objectives that have been set for them and managing these people, managing these resources, handling these externals. But if they move to a mindset of leading, the stress is going to go. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Gentlemen, as always, this conversation is has been robust, I hope, for you, for you, Muhammad, as well. And I'm going to make this suggestion to the people who are watching this. We, we talked before about wanting involvement of, of people who are listening and might have some ideas. At the end of this, this video, we're going to put up an email address and I'm going to invite people who are listening, if you've got any questions about what we're talking about, if you disagree, if you support, whatever, please send them via that email and we will spend time next time going through those. How about that? So, yeah, beautiful. And if an email is too much, uh, they can also send, uh, write in the comments what other sources of stress does a leader go through so that we can enrich the conversation forward in the coming absolutely. Uh, episodes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I want to encourage as much interaction with people who are watching this. And, and I want to not just give um, token uh, uh, assistance to that but rather to say we want you to send emails and when we get them I, I wouldn't even would even suggest that at some point we might even spend a whole session simply going through questions that people have submitted or comments that they've made okay yeah and, and 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 also people can connect with us on linkedin and other platforms like myself graham Mohammed. we are all on linkedin yeah. connect with us reach out that is well said, Phoebe. Absolutely. The conversation. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you say that, oh, gosh, I've got to make this final point. Leaders should be humble. Leaders should be approachable. And I, some years ago in the corporate world, I was doing a, 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 a what we might call a joint venture, and I was the senior person from my organisation working with another company. And when we finished, one of the gentlemen came up to me from the other company and said, Graham, I just want to say thank you. In all the 12 or so years that I've been with this organisation, you are the only person at your level who has ever spoken to me. I couldn't believe it. I could That's... not believe it. Why don't leaders do this? Leaders, Well, leaders do this. So communication, open, talking. We want to hear from you. And as Phoebe says approach us on LinkedIn, whatever. But that's my point. We are not going to run away. We will interact with you just as all leaders should interact with the people that they are with. Gentlemen, thank you once again. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, thank Phoebe. You. See you soon. <laughs> See you soon.